So Matt, a couple of days ago at this point, maybe a week ago, we got a press release announcement, so those rumors are true, of a couple of new products. We got a new 10th gen iPad, we got the iPad Pro, and we got a new Apple TV. And the Apple TV, actually, it got a little bit of a price drop, right? Yeah, it was a little like cheaper? A little bit. I don't have the number on my head, but I believe that's true. So Apple TV got a little cheaper, but that's all great. The, the device itself is just kind of whatever. Right, that's a whatever update. But let's talk about iPads because I feel like there's a lot of controversy around this update. The lackluster iPad Pro update is one of the things is the iPad Pro really got nothing. And also the 10th gen iPad. Talk to me a little bit about what changed with the 10th gen iPad and why people are really upset that Apple made this, which sort of seems weird. It seems like a good update. Yeah. So what happened? Yeah, I'm a little confused about why people are so upset about it. But basically, let's go over what the 10th, 10th gen iPad is. So we got these rumors a while ago that they would be doing basically like an iPad Air, but for the cheaper model. That's basically what we got. So we got no bezels. We got Touch ID. Um, and wait, am I right? I'm blanking out. It's been a while since I looked at these. Yeah, we been, Touch ID, like built into the power these. button. Okay, that, that, that's the, the one for whatever reason. Yeah. I was forgetting if it actually had Touch ID or not, but yes, it does. So basically, like the iPad Air, like I said, Touch ID in the power button, no bezels, or I guess it does have bezels, but you know, the thin bezels, squared off design. But there are that's kind of where the similarities end and some of the differences begin. Um, for the first time ever, the iPad now has a landscape camera. So instead of holding it vertically and having the camera in front of you, you would hold it horizontally. Um, and that is, Interesting, very cool that the iPad has done that because, you know, before, if you would put your iPad on your desk and have a FaceTime call or something like that, you'd basically be looking at the center of the screen at whoever you're talking to, but the camera would be off to the side. So that this should now fix that. Interesting, very cool. Um, but then it also, this is kind of where the more controversy comes in. It has USB-C, awesome, great, but it still uses the first generation Apple Pencil, which if you remember is Lightning, so their solution for this is to use an adapter that you then have to plug into the USB-C port to charge. There's reasons that we'll talk about why this is the case, at least in theory, uh, but that really seems to be where the controversy comes out. Uh, with this new design, we get colors, we get a higher price. Um, what was the price? 449, I believe? 450, yeah. yes. So it's a higher price um, and I guess, you know, that that's kind of it. I, that's really the controversy, right? It's the USB-C Apple Pencil. Am I missing something? What else? Is, I, I, what else? I do think the it seems like the general uh, feeling of dismay from people in the Apple community is that the iPad line's a mess now because well, yeah, yeah, <laughs> the iPad ninth gen still exists at its mm -hmm. two ninety nine, three twenty nine price, depending on where you get it, and now the tenth gen is like another option. So now you've yep. got iPad, tenth gen iPad, iPad Mini, iPad Air, iPad Pro five options that uh, really don't have a lot of exclusive features. Like the waters are muddied now in the Very. iPad universe. And it almost seems like the 10th gen iPad and iPad Air are really <laughs> similar devices. I think the only thing, let's see, the iPad Air, it's got a laminated display. It's right. got Apple Pencil 2 support. It's got an M1 chip inside. But what else would be inherently better about iPad Air that'd be different than 10th gen iPad. I can't think of anything off the top of my yeah, head, I can't. I can't think which of is sort of why a lot of people are saying Apple needs to really clean house with the iPad lineup and they need to get rid of one of these devices. The 10th, 10th gen iPad and the iPad Air cannot exist side by side. There's just not a lot of difference in. I think, what's the price difference? Is it $50? Is it four fifty and 500 if I remember correctly? So I believe so, yeah. That just makes things even more confusing. And we've talked about this before, how Apple has a mess on their hands when it comes to the iPad and different product lineups. So where do we go from here? What do you think the roadmap looks like? Do they keep the iPad mini around? Do they keep the Air and the 10th gen? Do they lower the price? What do you think we're going to see here in the next 12 months? So I think what really it comes down to, like you mentioned, is the iPad 10th gen, this new one, and the iPad Air. I think that's really where the contention is because those just don't make sense. I think the iPad mini still makes sense. It's a very niche product, but it is unique. It's not something you can get in any of the other products. The base iPad, the 9th gen, is still the most affordable. So that kind of makes sense, even though you know it's kind of weird to have two 
just named iPads. There's just a ninth gen intention. It's kind of weird to have two iPads available, um, but they look different. So I guess when you're in the store, it kind of makes sense. Um, and then the iPad Pro, even though there are issues, which we'll talk about, is still the iPad Pro. So that's fine. I really think the issue here was that Apple really intended the stage manager feature to only work on M1 iPads, but they had to go back on that because it was dumb. And that's why the Air had the M1 and the Pro had the M1. So that way you didn't have to get the Pro, but you would still, you know, want to spend a little bit more money for the Air over the 10th gen. But now that the features are kind of all over the place, it still doesn't make very much sense. I'm, I'm in my opinion, if they were going to kill one, I'd say kill the iPad Air because... I mean, they're just, like you said, they're just so close. And there's actually, in my opinion, there's some benefits to the iPad 10th gen with the new keyboard. So the iPad Air can use the Magic Keyboard and all the, you know, iPad Pro accessories, but the new 10th gen iPad has a different connector system and a new keyboard, which I actually think is better. So the back is a kickstand and the keyboard with trackpad is separate. So you can actually take the keyboard all the way off if you want and you just use the kick keyboard or the uh, kickstand feature, or you can have the the uh, keyboard on there, flip it around, all that kind of stuff. I think it's actually a better system. Um, and it makes, I don't know, I just think the iPad Air has no room to exist anymore, especially at the price points. They could yeah. move the price points around, but I still mm -hmm. think it doesn't make that much sense. Yeah, I know Apple's never going to do it, but what would make sense in my mind and what I think everybody would love is if the 10th gen iPad was the same price, if not maybe slightly higher than the 9th gen and they killed it, and you had that hardware combo software combo for $299 or $329, even $349, that's a really great iPad for the price. Kill the iPad Air, and then you have the iPad and the iPad Pro. It sort of is like the iPhone lineup you have. Well, I guess you'd have iPad Mini, iPad, iPad Pro. Three different size options, different features, and for those who just want a really good iPad and don't need the M chip or whatever, you've got a really great 10th gen. If you want that M series power and you want that screen and all that stuff, then you'd go up to the iPad Pro. That just seems to make the most sense to me, but I just don't think they're going to do it. Yeah, I, I, I guess from your speculation, what do you think their thinking is here? Because like, they had to well, be thinking something. It seems like, I don't know, they've got to phase the ninth gen out, right? I think the only reason it exists now is because of the price. Unless there's some big iPad shakeup coming that we haven't seen, this just seems weird. Or maybe Apple is smarter than all of us, <laughs> and they figured that if they had these options, even as it exists they're still able to sell more iPads because there's a customer for each model, which it's just tough because if you go in and you look at the iPad Air and 10th gen, some, I feel like if you looked at those side by side, I'm sure some people will be swayed to pay the $50 more. And if you have enough of those, that'll make it worth it. But it just seems, doesn't make a lot of sense to me. I, I don't know what the thinking was. My assumption was the 9th gen would be gone. The 10th gen would take its place. That seems to be the most clean cut answer. But with the price is that now, it just is so confusing. I, I don't, I don't get it. Yeah, I don't know, and I don't really know what they would do, because it's like okay, they could make because we're going to talk about the iPad Pro in a second. There's issues there too, but even if they fix those issues, that doesn't matter for the lower line, right? Like it still makes the rest of the line confusing. Um, well, I guess yeah, I don't let's know. let's talk about iPad Pro because that sort of opens up another can of worms that feeds into this issue. We had heard big updates were coming. Then we heard small updates were coming, and then ultimately what happened, the update we got was <laughs> no <update>. basically nothing. <laughs> we got yeah. slightly tweaked Wi-Fi capabilities. We yeah, have an M2 chip inside, and that's it, basically. There's well, a hover the, pencil yeah, thing, the hover pencil which is, sort of that's seems ridiculous. It. That's it. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I don't know what happened here. I mean, I guess on one hand, you could say, they it just they couldn't figure it out or something like that. So next year they're gonna get that whole rumored update, which kind of is what happened with the Apple Watch and with the iPhone and you know that kind of thing. So maybe that's the case. But also it's just like, what are we on? It, we are on like year four, what twenty eighteen? Yeah, year four of the same thing, pretty much. I mean, okay, fine. The you could say when they did the mini LED and the M one chip, that was a pretty big update. But for all intents and purposes, this is the same iPad. Well, I feel like the other issue, too, is that 
I, I, I get it too. Like spec bump years are going to happen. Apple certainly uh, knows what they're doing and they know someone's going to need a new iPad Pro and it's a great option. But one of the bigger issues continues to be you've got this really great silicon inside and arguably really good hardware, but the software can't do anything with it. And right. people are sort of scratching their heads as to why the iPad Pro needs this chip if it really doesn't do anything with it. And I think yeah, that's exactly. an, another issue with the iPad Pro. And it, it seems like for so long, the iPad had a very clear purpose. The hardware was good, but now it's like the hardware is almost too good and the prices are still very high for basically it's, I, I'd, I'd say it's a tablet. I mean, you know what you're getting, but it just, it doesn't, the pieces don't line up. Something doesn't make sense here. And it was always the rumor that Apple was going to reveal some big master plan where they'd show why that silicon had to be so powerful. But it's now been, what, a couple of years? It's, it's been at least a year, 18 months, and we've seen no explanation as to why uh, we need an M-series chip in there. So it just doesn't seem to make any sense. Yeah, and I guess we're now in speculation land, but do you think we heard some rumors about possibly like a Mac OS Lite type interface or operating system that... Apple is working on. This is very much a rumor, but there's you know thoughts there. We also did get, you know, DaVinci Resolve is coming to the iPad apparently. So well, I mean it is, but like, is it like are we on? Are we just getting to the point where it's finally going to happen? But are, or are we just tricked again? Because this is what happens every single time. Stage Manager has been such a nightmare for Apple that I feel like they have to be very cautious with their next moves. I feel like that would have been a nice bridge to either make the iPad seem more functional as it is and to prove iPad OS's functionality or to sort of get people ready for a Mac OS light, Mac OS esque feature or a user interface on the iPad Pro. But now, with many saying that they can't even figure out Stage Manager, I don't know what that next move is going to be. Now I feel like they've got to be very careful. Maybe it's time to go back to the drawing board and figure out what this plan is. It just sort of seems weird how obviously there's this plan inside of Apple. There's a, let's call it a whiteboard. And they've got sort of the progression. Okay, we're going to make this change, then this change, and this change. And it's been plotted for years now. We're going to do this chip, then we're going to do M1, then we're going to do M2. And that's a good trajectory to have, but... What's the end goal? I just I wonder what that end goal is inside of Apple and why we haven't seen any sign of that if there was a plan all along. Was the plan just to put this new silicon in there and say we're going to do it because we can or is this building to something but we've been building and building and building for a while and it doesn't seem like we're going to go anywhere? Yeah, that's kind of the the question because I I mean, obviously, the ultimate goal is to sell as many iPads as possible, right? So is the answer to sell more iPad Pros to give it the Pro functionality everyone begs for? Or is it to keep it more of an iPad? And for the Pros in specific, the iPad Pros, I can't help but feel that if they really went all out and made it as Pro as possible, they would sell way more of them. I don't know. Maybe I'm wrong. I mean, and even... Maybe, yeah. Even if it was just, okay, we're not going to put Mac OS on here, but we're going to take our Apple us being the makers of these apps, Logic, Final Cut Pro, um, maybe Motion, Compressor, all that stuff. We're going to take our Pro apps and we're going to put them on the iPad. We're going to show other app makers our thinking for a touch first plus keyboard trackpad interface. Like we're going to show you how powerful the iPad could be. Even if it wasn't Mac OS, I don't, I don't even care about Mac OS. If they just had the apps, that would be a really big leap for the iPad, but we can't even get there. And third-party apps exist and they're okay, but it's still sort of a hodgepodge to try to use them. It's just, it's not as convenient as just getting a Mac and just doing it the traditional way. Yeah, exactly. And I, I guess I'll make in, you know, kind of going along with that, I'll make a confession, I should say, but if you're watching the video, I'm, I'm in a very not finished room right now because we ended up moving and everything's been kind of uh, all over the place, but my iPad Pro with Stage Manager, I, iPad OS 16, everything, all the cool features that I was excited for, it has been dead for the last <laughs> three weeks. It has been sitting on a shelf. I have not touched it, but instead I've been carrying my MacBook Pro everywhere and it does everything I need. When I really come, like when crunch time comes and like I don't have time to mess with anything because we're moving, we're packing, we're doing everything, the MacBook is still what's by my side. Whereas the iPad, although it's fun when I, you know, can lay around and not do anything, when I actually need to get work done, there's still no comparison for what you can get with the Mac. And 
and I thought maybe stage manager would be that thing. And for certain tasks, like, you know, if I was only doing administrative tasks or like, you know, document kind of stuff, okay, it's fine, but that's not what I'm doing. So it, it just, the iPad as it sits right now just doesn't work for that pro work work style, or at least for mine. And I, I, it's just frustrating because there's like things you can easily see them doing that would fix it and they just don't. So I, I just want to know the reason. That It's really what it comes down to. Like what are what is their plan? And I don't know if they even have a plan, which maybe is the problem.